What is going on guys? So we are only a few weeks away from the Waking Flame DLC to hit the live server and there was a lot of meta shifting changes in this update. In this video, we are going to go over everything that is affecting magic classes in the Waking Flame DLC. I'm going to do two parts. I'm going to do a stamina class in the next video, but this one's going to be for magic classes. We're going to go over the armor changes, champion points, new sets and sets that I'm going to be recommending and class buffs and more. This patch will truly shake up the PVP meta. I'm going to give you my perspective and starting point for some of my magic classes next patch. Keep in mind there is different metas and play styles on every server so you may think of something that's actually completely different than I do and that is okay. I think in due time there will be new best in slot specs and builds for every single class but this patch I think will take a little bit longer than most simply because the fundamentals of this game are changing drastically. These builds and ideas that I suggest are to help you guys out with a starting point i've only been able to test in duels which really isn't as in depth as i would like it to be as always i'll provide my reasoning and logic of what i'm looking at and the potential it might have relative to the meta but before we get started if you guys are enjoying my content don't forget to subscribe it's free and you guys will never miss an upload also if this video helps you in any way don't forget to smash that like button without further ado let's get right into it so i think the best place to start this video is look at the armor passive changes now, these changes are a game changer for pvp i actually recommended these changes in a video a while back during the blackwood pts so this was like you know back in may this was a long time ago and they pretty much did all the changes that i recommended maybe they listened to the video maybe they didn't i don't know but they changed it and i think this is overall a good thing for pvp so let's take a look at the armor passives and see what they changed so we still have the bonuses and penalties of light armor uh the penalties are very very annoying but you know we have to deal with them um so the passive wise they didn't change grace or evocation or spell warding I would have liked to have seen them maybe, you know, adjust something here, but I guess, you know, changing a little bit less is okay for now. But the main two things they changed here was Prodigy and Concentration. So they added Weapon Critical here to Prodigy, and they added Physical Penetration to Concentration, as well as the Spell Pen. So, from a Magicka perspective, this really didn't change a whole lot. But what this allows, if you're running like a type of hybrid spec, you know, Magicka focused, if you're using stamina skills like, you know, Noxious Breath on a Magic DK, if you're possibly using Dizzy Swing or if you're using like Crystal Weapon uh, on a Sorcerer, I could see some viability using Light Armor pieces with that kind of spec. And it could be very interesting to have this extra physical penetration and uh, weapon crit as well. So the Light Armor really didn't change a lot, but the Medium Armor is really what changed the meta for Magic classes. So again, there's no, there's no penalties for being a Medium Armor, so it was actually really, really good. Um, dexterity, they changes pretty substantially. So this is kind of a nerf to stamina builds, but a buff to magic classes. Because we're more than likely magic classes are gonna be using three light, three medium, and one heavy. So we're gonna get the benefits of Prodigy and the benefits of, of extra spell penetration, but also get the extra critical damage and critical healing done. But that's not all for medium armor. They still have the same passives here, improved sneak and one walker, but they added weapon and spell damage to the agility pass. So this makes magic and stamina classes 100% equal. This is what I was striving for in that video is stamina classes can stack so much more weapon damage, get so much more healing, and it's just that easy. Now, I think there still will be a little bit of a stamina meta, but I think magic classes have kind of chipped away ever so slightly into becoming more versatile in PVP, at least for outnumbered scenarios. Uh, rather than just being a ganker or a bomber now this passive alone really is a game changer for magic classes but the biggest problem is is you're going to have a lot less sustain so you're going to have to counterbalance that with a race with different type of food so this is what i was saying is going to be a very rough i guess few weeks probably even close to a few months to really test all these things out um and see kind of what's going to be best in slot uh, I, st I do believe at least running three to four medium is going to be viable on most magic classes, but you're really going to have to spec highly, highly, highly into your overall recovery because, you know, we lose all that costing cost decrease. So we're going to have to build a lot more into our sustain. So like I said earlier, I, I see a 3-3-1 meta for most magic classes, whether you're on a DK, Templar, Warden, I think 3-3-1 is going to be the ideal best spot truly really try now the reason being is the extra weapon damage we get uh, is just insane now let me show you my stats real quick um we're not running anything crazy here we'll go into the build here in a little bit but just look at my buff stats okay i'm gonna buff up with degeneration and power of light so that's it 6100 spell damage that's a lot of spell damage okay there's a few other buffs going on here for the templar but 
6100 spell damage you haven't seen that probably ever for a magic spec so this thing is gonna hit very very hard right that's just mainly from the medium or passive change now if you want to buff it fully with a light attack if you guys want to look at that 6600 spell damage so this thing is going to slap very very hard this is more of like a glass cannon type of build since we're getting more damage mitigation next patch i think this will be okay for us to try out obviously we may adjust it some but i think ideally this is what i'm going to be trying uh, at the launch so as you guys see in there the extra spell damage is insane eight percent so we're running four medium and three light on the spec again sustain is going to be an issue here obviously we'll have to adjust this around but i think we'll be a-okay what this inherently does is we can now slot infuse spell damage are going to be a lot more potent for pvp so stamina classes were the only ones that could really benefit from using an, an infused weapon damage but now magic classes get that same type of benefit with damage healing power and and pretty much everything else but also kind of leads me into a kind of like a hybrid spec so you could possibly see magic classes use skills like resolving vigor now it's going to be really dependent on the class you're playing obviously i probably wouldn't do it on a templar because we already have pretty decent healing but you could see this probably on a stam dk and like a magic dk stam dk hybrid uh, because they get you know major mending uh they could use you know the molten armaments to give them both weapon and spell damage so it could be very interesting to say the least to see this because that's dk's biggest problem is healing power so i definitely think that you could see some type of hybrid specs but obviously this is going to have to have a lot of testing and there's really no exact way to you know test this fully uh unless you really just get into the game and, and are actually playing this on the live server so let's kind of go into my build here and let me kind of explain what i'm doing so we have mechanical acuity dual wield what this is going to do is dual wield gives us the most spell damage possible um because it increases our offhand damage right here the um dual wielding expert so this gives us weapon and spell damage by 60 percent on our offhand so this is going to be ultimately i think best in slot if you're going to build for high spell damage on a magic spec so that's why we're using dual wield there uh for our monster set we're using magma incarnate this is going to be best in slot i think for pretty much every single class next patch uh whenever you heal yourself with a single target heal um this can be rapid regeneration resolving vigor rally whatever you heal yourself you gain 215 weapon spell damage and gives yourself minor resolve and allies within eight meters of you gain minor resolve and minor courage so uh, for group play this is definitely going to be best in slot it gives good recovery magic and sand recovery just going to be a really really great set so for my next set we're using heartland conqueror now this is just an overall solid set i mean increases the effectiveness of our weapon traits so we're using nern honed and then we're using sharpened uh and then on our back bar we're using defending i think defending is going to be best in slot next patch because healing got nerfed so uh, i think mitigation is going to be the best way to really survive so with that being said as you guys can tell here we're using all crafted sets except for obviously the monster and our, our maelstrom resto so what this means is there's going to be a crafted set meta next patch simply because you can run crafted sets in any way you want you can run three three one you could run four three you can run a three two two whatever you want to run here it doesn't really make a difference i mean i guess it does make a difference but you can drastically change your build depending on the armor weights to get more mitigation get more damage really whatever you want to do here now i think there's a few sets of note that are going to be used on magic classes there's going to be sets like steigen i think steigen will be pretty good on a magic knight blade it is medium armor so you can get the benefits of having the extra spell damage and also it gives you spell damage on the bonuses it's just an overall great set i think you could possibly see some magic classes use invisibility potions to use this set possibly i don't know it, it kind of sounds very weird but definitely that set looks amazing for nightblaze next patch we also have sets like deadly deadly looks amazing uh, it's getting a little bit of nerf here but i think it's going to increase the overall dots so it doesn't matter if you're using puncturing sweeps it doesn't have to be physical anymore it could be any type of dot so this could be used on magic dk uh, magic templar but the only downside is this set gives you weapon damage so i think what this is going to ultimately do is if you're running more of a hybrid spec like if you're using like a stam dk i think it's what's going to be very versatile on is because you can increase the damage of your dots right so if you're using noxious breath and if you're using burning embers on like a hybrid stam dk magic dk build i think deadly is going to be a very solid option and i think finally 
for the last medium armor step we're gonna have way of the air now this is just an idea and a concept i tested this a long time ago on the pts and back in blackwood so i was i've been considering i'm running a bow on the back bar for like classes like magic necromancer to give us a little bit more speed now way of the air is going to give us a lot of stamina regen but whenever we roll dodge we're going to gain weapon and spell damage so we're going to get the scaling of the weapon and spell damage from the medium armor pieces and if we roll dodge we're going to gain all that stamina recovery so our stamina recovery is going to be fine i think it's an option to try uh sam or necros in general have a ton of sustain and it could be very interesting to say the least to see how that kind of plays out and kind of what that does it's just an idea and a concept i've been thinking about but crafted set wise we're going to see sets like mechanical acuity i think it's going to be best in slot for a lot of classes uh, especially full seven medium builds uh you have sets like heartland conquer as you guys seen clever alchemist i think it's gonna be amazing because it gives both weapon and spell damage and then you can have sets like stoon they're going to be very versatile on templars night blades uh any class that has access to off balance you could maybe use it with dizzy swing on a type of stamina magic build uh to give you both physical and spell penetration definitely just there's so many different drastic changes here that you really, really don't know how it's going to play out until this hits a live server. This is just giving you ideas and kind of how I'm going to be approaching this patch and the sets I'm looking at. But we also have a lot of the new sets. I've done two videos covering the Hrothgar and the Plague Break. Those sets look absolutely amazing. These are only PvP rewards though. The Hrothgar set looks so good. The fact that it doesn't have to scale off of your resources is just absolutely amazing. Uh, it scales off their overall resistances. So... If they're tanky, it's going to hit them very, very hard. It's AoE. It has a good burst potential, uh, especially if you have a good CC like with Fossilize or with Take Flight, possibly with Arctic Blast. Could add a deadly, deadly combo. Or if you're using snares like Talons or the AoE snare on Warden, just really looks like a solid set for magic classes. Plague Break, again, I think this is going to be a very good set for magic DK. Uh, it basically keeps 100% uptime on Defile. Uh, all you have to deal is direct damage and uh it, it's just on them and, and if they cleanse you know then they're just gonna eat a big burst from the plague break and it's gonna scale off your weapon and spell damage so if you're building high stats uh it, it's just gonna be a very good set i think to keep pressure on people um because it's kind of like a catch-22 if you cleanse it you're taking bursts but then it goes right back on you it basically has 100 percent uptime and i don't think they're going to change it before it goes live then you have other sets like rush of agony scorian feast thunder collar and dark convergence now i haven't tested these fully yet but i'm really wanting to try dark convergence on a necromancer uh, i think that scorian's feast looks really really good for the heavy attack getting those resources getting the recoveries uh, it doesn't necessarily clarify what heavy attack you have to do it could even proc from a medium wave we don't know yet so you could technically, you know, do like a heavy attack with like sword and board on the back bar. There's 300 recovery. Do heavy attack again. There's 300 weapon damage. So I think overall, there's a lot of good sets coming out next patch. But sadly, what is kind of annoying is a lot of these sets, um, you know, they're going to be behind the DLC paywall. And a lot of these sets, you know, like the Scorians Feast, the Thundercaller, are, are going to be behind you know the dlc paywall if you have eso plus it's not gonna be a big deal but these sets are the most versatile hybrid type of specs they're giving both weapon and spell damage offensive penetration so it's kind of more or less selling content to get you to run the new dungeons to be able to be viable in pvp that's the only downside i see to this but you know it's a game and they're gonna do this because they have to make money but ideally i think these are gonna be very very good uh, for pvp next patch and those are going to be the the main uh sets i'm looking at and obviously there's plenty of others there's obviously others like necropotence you know all the other sets that we've ran forever uh spinners you know all that stuff but i think these are the new sets i'm looking at to to possibly take over the meta i think mechanical cutie is going to be the best now here's my reasoning and logic behind mechanical cutie i can't provide you know everything on all the sets i just mentioned but you know i, I tried to do my best but the five piece, whenever you deal direct damage, you gain an earning mechanical vision for five seconds, granting you 100% critical strike chance. So this makes it to where if you deal damage, uh, you gain 100% crit chance. So insane burst potential with a crescent sweep or whatever. The downside is it does have a decently high cooldown. But I think an overall PvP, uh, it's not going to be a big deal. You know, you're going to be going offensive a little bit and you're going to be kiting a lot of siding and and you're, you're gonna be okay i think there's gonna be some good burst potential especially with this the crit damage scaling for the medium armor with race against time 
it's just going to be a great set for PvP personally. Uh, I see this being used on a lot of magic classes, whether you're playing a DK, you're playing a Templar, you're playing a Nightblade. I, I honestly think it's going to be best in slot just because of the sheer damage increase and, and, and people really aren't stacking high M pin. They probably will though uh, next patch. Also, you know, all the crit damage bonfires you have, you have the Khajiit race, you have armor, you have like class passives like on Templar. We have, I think it is piercing spear, increases our critical damage. We also have champion points that increase our critical damage done, like fighting finesse and backstabber. So there's a lot of extra damage increase you're going to get, and it's going to add for some insane burst potential on a lot of classes. So let's talk about a few class buffs here. So Balance Warrior, this is very big for, for Templars. Um, increases your weapon and spell damage by 6%. This on the live server is only physical or only weapon damage and only spell resistance. So we're gonna get tankier on Templars. We're also gonna gain more spell damage. Now, uh, DK's got a buff as well. They're gonna gain like the same physical and spell resistance that they got here. It's gonna be, you know, I think it's like scaled warrior or something that something scales on on dk we'll go over that here in a little bit when we get on dk but this passive alone uh, is huge for templars i mean we're getting minor sorcery because of our passive here the illuminate for using any of these skills uh we're getting major sorcery from degeneration and we're also getting six percent from this we also have the extra weapon and spell damage from medium armor passives but as you guys can see here, we're gaining a lot of damage here. And we also have the Magma Incarnate. This, I think we go up to like 7k spell damage uh, when that's fully buffed. So, as you guys can see here, this is going to be insane damage next patch. I think Magplar is going to be probably A tier, if not S tier, for just the sheer damage it's going to have. And I'm overall very, very excited for uh, Templar next patch. All right, so now we're on the Magic DK. So we're going to go over what I'm going to be trying out next patch and what I'm going to be looking at. So, as you guys seen in some of the gameplay... We were using Hrothgar's Chill on, on the Magic Dragonite. This thing is amazing. Uh, the burst potential is insane. This thing hits anywhere between four, three, four, five K on people. And that's some good burst because we're getting a little bit tankier next patch. There's a lot of damage mitigation in the CP. We're gonna go over that here in a minute. But yeah, this set is ideal for Dragonites. Like it's amazing with Fossilize. Um, again, Magma Incarnate, this is gonna be best in slot. Uh, we're doing 331 on this to get that heavy armor chest reinforced. Three medium for the crit damage, scaling and weapon damage and spell damage. And then we're running mechanical acuity. Like I said, guys, mechanical acuity looks nasty. I mean, with the amount of damage we have on this spec, uh, the amount of pressure we have with dots and everything like that, this is probably going to be the best dueling spec, probably. Uh, I mean, because it got pretty much good cheese here with Hrothgar's and, and Magma Incarnate. You may be a little bit too squishy, though. Just depends. Um, but yeah, we are a Khajiit. We're going to scale up our crit damage insanely high uh, without race against time or anything like that. We have a, I think like a 39% crit damage increase. Yep, right here. So we have Khajiit, we have Shadow Munda Stone uh, and, and all that stuff. So with race against time up, we have a 49% crit damage increase there. So we at base have a 50% crit damage increase. So we're like a 99% crit damage increase. So yeah, uh, we have a ton of crit damage here. So let's buff up here real fast. Spell damage isn't as high as the Magplar. Um, we have 3.4k just with our, our, our buff here. The reason why we went Igneous Weapons is to buff our Noxious Breath. This could not be worth it. It's just a trial, um, seeing how this goes. I mean, look at the cost of this. This is only 2,000 stamina. Um, so we have a ton of stamina recovery because we're using the Smoke Bear Hunch food. Uh, we also have the Shadow Mind Stone, by the way. But... I mean, we have a ton of stamina recovery here, so I think we'll be fine uh, with overall stamina. The same, we have igneous weapons. Like all of these skills give us uh, stamina back. Whatever ones we use in the Earthen Heart, we get the Shattering Rocks, igneous weapons, uh, all that stuff. So our weapon damage is going to scale pretty evenly with our spell damage. Um, so our jewelry, we have one spell damage, one recovery, one reduced cost. I think it's going to be ideal. I really like the Swift. Uh, probably infuse is going to be best in slot for a lot of classes next patch max magic is not as high as we would like it to be but uh, i've been toying around with this uh, especially on the live server with my stampler and honestly we may not need that much uh, max magic depending on our recovery we may need to build more though uh, it just depends on on er pretty much everything have to test it for sure uh, pretty extensively but this works pretty pretty nice in duels um, when we have a potion and all that stuff up so 
Uh, if we need to, we could drop the Khajiit and go go Breton. It would be pretty simple, right? Um, but yeah, so our spell damage is this high, like this. We have 8.2k pen. With Noxious Breath, our pens are going to go up higher. So with, you know, all that stuff buffed, we have 4.1k spell damage. Uh, you know, our tooltip whips are insane. With this uh, proc a lot attack, tooltip whip is like 16k. So we got an insane burst here, uh, especially when we proc the mechanical. And we're just ripping through people. Like all of our dots are going to crit. That's a 27k crit whip. Obviously, I know it's against a dummy, but you guys get the gist about it. And, you know, that's not even including Hrothgar. So if you wanted to go just pure raw burst, maybe drop that because it's not going to give you as much scaling as you might want. But the definitely the burst from this is, is really, really crazy. So this is what I'm looking at next patch. Obviously, this could be not as tanky as we need to be. Whatever. Have to adjust it. Uh, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get here. This is just what I'm going to be looking at. Obviously, it's going to be pretty difficult to get Hrothgar's at the launch of the game. Because, you know, you have to get it from PvP rewards. So this probably won't be here. May try Heartland Conqueror. May try Spinners. Uh, it really just depends. Uh, but also, I think, that, I think a thing that's really going underrated here is critical healing. Since healing is getting nerfed next patch... Uh, this medium armor passive that increases our critical healing done is going to be very powerful. Uh, depending on your race, you know, that's why we have the Shadow Munda Stone that's going to give us 11% critical healing done. We have, you know, Khajiit. All this extra critical healing is going to definitely help us with this nerf to a healing next patch. And I really think this is going to be a very viable uh option i think khajiit could be best in slot one of the best races out there depending on how you spec it it's just an assumption of mine of what i'm going to be trying obviously you don't have to but it's just my ideas um so that's pretty much all for the dk um for other classes i don't have them made on the pts yet but looking at mechanical acuity and something like grace gloom on a mag blade uh, maybe run something a little bit more damaged like maybe twice born star i'm looking at twice born star for the magic knight blade because uh, you can you know run that crafted maybe gonna run uh war maiden just depends on on all, all the damage but definitely have to wait to see on the mag blade definitely really really want to make a good mag blade build next patch for the warden i think hrothgar's chill is going to be a really really good set uh it's going to help them with burst but the only problem is not having a great cc so you could use see some magdens using the buffed eye staff uh with the destructive clinch or reach depending on which the morph they want to go here uh, I did a video on the ice buffed if you guys want to watch that. But basically, the new destructive reach applies a dot and they increase the damage over time for the ice staff. It automatically procs the chilled, which will proc the um, like the magicka crit damage increase taken. So it could be really, really good. Um, for magic sork, I don't really play magic sork enough. I would assume that they pretty much stay out of the meta anyways. And they just run build max stats. They, that's how they play. Necro is a little bit interesting dark convergence set looks really really good for the necromancer but we'll definitely have to wait to see and how it really works uh, i can see dark convergence and mechanical acuity for some insane burst potential with a harmony spec but it really just depends man i don't really play necro enough i know a lot of pc people do though so definitely have to wait to see on that on kind of how that shakes down but that's kind of my ideas about what i'm going to be looking at next patch but the main magic classes i'm going to be playing are the ones that went over with magic dragonite and magic templar so these are my favorite ones to play and these are the ones i enjoy the most so let's go over the champion points really quickly i know this is a kind of a little bit longer video but i think there's some good value in this so i think the biggest thing is they added was the ironclad this is a very big thing um we got more damage mitigation in battle spirit and then we had this added i don't think this was a personally a good idea damage feels good this patch like i didn't really like the blackwood patch at first damage feels really high which also feels good in a way um i don't know i, I didn't like it at first but now I, i'm i'm growing to like it a little bit more now that i found a decent build on stampler but i think adding the more damage mitigation in the battle spirit adding ironclad now that reduces direct damage taken you also have the new uh slaughtables um the pain's refuge is really really good uh this is gonna be really nice against magic dragonites i mean this is kind of sad in a way like anything with a negative effect is gonna deal less damage i mean 20 percent damage mitigation is crazy major protection is 10 percent, so this is double of that when you're fighting outnumbered this is gonna be very very nice but you know you got to think like how many negative effects we have on a magic dragonite i mean look at this 
let's just hit let's just hit our buffs uh and let's just hit hit this ad so there's one negative effect two um i mean that's like five six negative effects in a duel right so that's six percent damage mitigation um so yeah you have to think about that dots and, and stuff like that are going to be very disrupted by the overall mitigation um the next one is going to be sustained by suffering that's why our sustain looks a little bit off uh because we have to be in combat with a negative effect on us to get this recovery so that's kind of why my recoveries look lower than they actually are because they nerfed uh rejuvenation to quite substantially and probably not going to run this you're always going to have a negative effect in combat so you may as well run this relentless do not get this this is stupid do not grab this this is honestly dumb i don't really think this is going to be worth it um, because you can get uh more damage mitigation from pain's refuge but this gives you more initial mitigation i, I don't think it's going to be worth it next we have my most favorite uh new slottable added celerity this is going to be very very fun i i really am looking forward to this for my magic classes to be a little bit faster uh this is what i personally am going to be running uh because we have pretty decent movement speed here you know we have race against time celerity i think this is going to be very very fun to use we now have one swift uh, i'm really looking forward to the cp passive that's the biggest one that you know i'm really looking forward to other than these uh, then we just got the regular balance vitality uh to my knowledge that's all the big ones that are really important these these over here aren't the best uh ward master not too great long combat reduces your movement speed and increase your block mitigation not really that great for pvp personally um refreshing stride now this could be good for a stam sork but uh i i don't think this is going to be that good to be honest i mean you, you you could use it for sure but just not my cup of tea i'd rather have celerity thrill of the hunt don't think this is that great you know you gain six seconds of major expedition after you kill something not that worth it i don't think um I, I think that the celerity is definitely gonna be better for pvp so that is pretty much all for the video guys so let's do a quick recap the main thing I, I guess you guys can take away from this is the medium armor passive changes definitely try to fit in some medium armor pieces uh crafted sets are gonna be the easiest to, to do this there's a lot of good crafted sets out there and i think they're gonna be best in slot for a lot of classes definitely pay attention to mechanical acuity uh, with the crit damage scaling of Khajiit, race against time, CP slottables, um, Shadow Munges Stone, you know, all this stuff is looking really, really sweet uh, for PvP. People really don't run a lot of critical resistance. You know, I only have 2,000. So having all this crit damage increase is definitely going to negate that because it critical resistance. I did a whole video going over damage mitigation explained. If you guys are interested in how that's calculated, then definitely check out the video. Uh, but I'm not going to go too depth into it here because it's pretty much at the end. But yeah, guys, we got some good buffs for Dragonite and Templar. Definitely looking forward to this upcoming patch. The next video we're going to be doing, we're going to talk about stamina classes and what I'm going to be using and what I'm going to be trying. Honestly, the only bad thing about stamina classes was the dexterity change. Everything else is pretty much staying the same. So I definitely can see, you know, stamina classes being okay uh, for the most part. I think that magic has just got a little bit better next patch. But I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please do consider giving this video a thumbs up. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.